Hey, it's Robert Jiggler with National Bride down the corner. I'm gonna make some biltong, which is one of South Africa's favorite snacks. So you're having your braai, biltong's a really great snack to have before you sit onto the meat that's on the braai. What do you need to make biltong? Number one, you need some good meat. Now you can use many different types of red beef meat or game meat or whatever you prefer to make biltong. The better the meat you use, the nicer the biltong is gonna be generally. Generally top side and silver side are sort of your primary cuts for making biltong. When it comes to choice of meat for me though, I like something that's a little bit softer, so I normally go with rump steak. So you might say that's quite expensive, that's quite an expensive meat to use for this. But if you consider the price of rump steak, which is about 150 rand a kg, in comparison to the price of biltong that you would buy in a store, this is still really a bargain. So you can use top side or silver side, like I said, that's generally what people tend to use. That is a little bit tougher. This is nice and soft and I like the way the fat cures as well. Some people prefer to use brown vinegar and brown vinegar is great because it gives you that nice color. I'm going to use white spirit vinegar and I'm still going to get a bit of color in this and I'll show you the trick to that a bit later. So the secret ingredient, well it's not really so secret because a lot of people use this, is Worcestershire sauce. This gives you some really nice color but it also brings some really nice tangy flavor to the biltong. Take note though that we're going to use very little of this because it's got a really powerful flavor. So you don't want that to override all the other nice flavors you get in the biltong. Next is the spices. I like a very simple combination of spices. Just salt, which of course is for curing the meat as well, pepper and coriander. Now you can add a lot of other things to your biltong, but I prefer that sort of clean flavor, which is really nice and that pepper's got a nice little bit of a bite to it. And that for me is just the perfect set of spice combination. So, salt. Just some really basic coarse salt that you're gonna grind into the pestle and then pepper as well. Now you can use whole pepper kernels, but that's a bit more work for you to grind it up. So I typically buy crushed pepper, which is still very coarse and that's how you want it to be. And then of course, coriander. So coriander, and this is whole seeds of coriander and we're gonna crush that as well with the pepper and the salt. The next thing you need is a pestle and mortar. This is fantastic for grinding all your spices together. Of course, you can just use your salt grinder and your pepper grinder as well, and then a grinder as well for your coriander, it depends on what you wanna do. But this is nice old school and I think it gives that nice sort of feeling of manually cooking your stuff and making something really cool. Stage one. We've got to get the meat into a container and then pour over our combination of vinegar and Worcestershire sauce. I like to use a sealable container because that way you can put the meat in and you can turn it over from time to time and then you get that combination to really permeate through all of the meat. All right, so let's get that going. Um, simply grab that meat out, chuck that into the container. It's got a little bit of blood in it. I'll keep that on the side. And then usually what I will do is then put in the first layer of meat, I'm gonna do two in this case here, yeah? and then put some vinegar and Worcestershire sauce over it and then do the second piece of meat again. So a key thing here is to get the right proportions of your vinegar and your sauce. For me, for getting the flavor right, I like to get just the right amount of vinegar and Worcestershire sauce combination. So just the right ratio of those. In this case here, I prefer to use about five parts vinegar to one part sauce. That sauce is really strong and I don't like that overpowering flavor of the sauce in my biltong. You can go a bit stronger than that, um, as much as I'd say three to one, it really depends on your taste and what you prefer, but five to one is what works perfectly for me. And that's one, two, three, four, and five. And then I'm gonna put my sauce in, so just one of these for the sauce. And that's about enough. So now I'm gonna put my second layer of meat in there. And that just fits into my container. Close that up. And then you wanna move this around so you get all that nice sauce and vinegar to go through all of the meat. And then we're gonna leave that for three hours to soak through and during that time, what I'm gonna do every sort of half an hour or so, is I'm gonna go and flip this over and sometimes flip it onto the side where the fat is especially, because I want that fat to get really nice and permeated by the vinegar. Generally, the longer you let this soak, the better the vinegar permeates through the meat. And this is, that's important, it's important for curing the meat and it's important that when you hang the meat as well, that you don't get insects and stuff jumping onto the meat. 
That is stage one. Let's go on to stage two, which is the mix of spices. So onto our spices, the proportion of spices is very simple. You want equal volumes of salt and pepper and your coriander. So I'm just gonna measure my salt by eyesight. You can, of course, use a measuring cup, for example, which I will do for the coriander and the pepper, but seeing as I've got a grinder for the salt, I'm just gonna use this by eye. Next, some pepper. And then followed by some coriander seed. And now what you want to do is just grind that nice and roughly together so you get a relatively uniform mix of the three. So an easy way to do this, of course, is to buy ground pepper as well as ground coriander seeds. The unfortunate thing about that is when stuff is pre-ground and sitting in a packet for a long time, it does lose some of its flavor and some of those really nice oils and aromas that come with the spices. Remember to turn your meat over every half an hour or so just to get a nice uniform permeation of that sauce in there. Also take note that you want that fat to get nice and permeated as well. So make sure that from time to time you put your container such that the fat is inside the vinegar sauce. So we've soaked the meat in vinegar for uh, quite a bit over three hours and now it's time to put the spices on. So we've ground these as you saw earlier. We're going to take the meat out of the container, put it in the plate. Now I would normally just spice it in the container but for the purposes of illustrating this for you I'm going to do it in the plate. Now you can be quite liberal with the spices, just make sure that you've made enough to cover both your pieces of meat. So just spread that on there, on the entire piece of meat. Try and do it relatively uniform. That's our first piece of meat done, let's do the second piece of meat now. And remember of course you're going to do both sides and you must put some spice on the fat as well. Just going to pat that down so it sticks to the meat. Remember that the salt and the vinegar are the main curing agents for your meat, so you've got to make sure that you put enough salt on the meat. So make sure you cover it, make sure you've got the spices on there quite liberally. Now that we're done with the spicing, we're going to take the meat and put it back into the container. We want that meat to stay in the container with all that salt and the spices on it for 24 hours. Now you can do it a bit quicker than that. Some people do it for a couple of hours and not for a full 24 hour period. But I really like to go for 24 hours and get that salt to permeate uniformly through the meat. And also that good old fashioned way of doing things generally gives you better flavor, better depth of flavor, as well as a nicer sort of rounded flavor to the whole set of biltong. So what we're going to do now is put this meat in a cool dark place for 24 hours. I generally just put this into a cooler box for example. The cooler box is a really good place to put it because it's dark inside once it's closed of course and also the temperature is relatively uniform. After 24 hours we're going to take this out of here and we are going to hang it. The key to hanging this, a couple of things, you can hang it in an open place. If you've got a biltong maker you can hang it in your biltong maker as well. I prefer to leave this in an open space to cure. It takes a little bit longer than if you're in a biltong maker. Now, if you're in a biltong maker, you'll typically have airflow over the meat, which dries it out a little bit quicker. And also sometimes it's heated as well. Some people have a heated system and that also increases the speed at which it cures. I much prefer to do it the old fashioned way. Give it a good couple of days, just hanging in an open airy space and let it go through the motions at its natural speed. If you've soaked the meat for long enough in the vinegar and you've brined it properly with that salt, then you won't have a problem with flies generally. If you're worried about flies and insects and so on, then you've got to make sure that you store that meat in an appropriate place. Notably, I prefer to have the meat in an airy, light place. So there's a bit of sunlight on it from time to time. And usually if there's sunlight, I want the fat facing into the sunlight because I want that to cure and get really nice and tasty. You can hang your meat in a dark place. It must be airy, that's very important. Use, there's a small possibility of getting mold on it, but if you brined it properly and had it in the vinegar for long enough and soaked it well, then you shouldn't have that issue. Here's some nice boltong that I've prepared and we're going to cut through this here and I'll show you how I like my boltong. So I like my boltong just a little bit wet, nice and moist. You can dry it out all the way if you want to or you can dry it a bit less if you want to. But this is how I like my boltong. So that is just perfect. 
nice and moist and with a nice rind of cured fat as well. Mm. That is dead right. That is exactly how I like it. Another reason I like rump is that it's not as grainy as top side or silver side. Of course, having top side and silver side that's grainy is nice as well because it's kind of a nice chew and, and mouth feel to it. But I prefer the nice soft rump and it's also really important to have the fat properly cured. So the fat and the salt and the meat for me is the perfect combination of flavors with a bit of pepper on top of that there just to give it a little bit of burn and a little bit of that peppery flavor as well. Note as well that in addition to just salt, pepper and coriander like I like it you can also put a bit of chili on there if you like to get a bit of more spiciness into it a bit more burn and also there are pre-mixed rice spices that you can buy so you can walk into a store or a butcher for example and get a pre-mix I like my simple combination however there's some really nice rice spices out there there are also some additional flavors like barbecue and so on so it really depends on what you enjoy I hope you found this informative hit the like button if you did also, please do subscribe and check out my other videos. Leave some comments below. Tell us about your experiences. I'd also like to learn from you if you've got a different way of doing things or you have a slight variation or a different variation that you think works really well, then put it in the comments. Let's learn about it. Let's try it out as well. I'd love to learn from you too. If you do try out this recipe, then leave a comment as well. I'd like to hear how it went for you. Until the next episode, go everywhere, see everything, and eat some great built on. But this is a delicious sauce. It's fantastic. Okay, Worcestershire, Worcestershire sauce. So, three really difficult things to say. I was wrong, I'm sorry, and Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire sauce. <laughs>